Before skyscrapers, Seattle's waterfront held little more than tide flats and evergreen forests. When there was a Douglas fir forest there, it ran off of the sunlight that fell on it. It used the water that fell on it. It was beautiful, and it did nothing that polluted Elliott Bay. What if urban landscapes like this could return to more natural states? That's what the Seattle-based Bullet Foundation is trying to do in creating the world's greenest office building. We're taking a, a piece of land that was, was basically a ramshackle bar and we're turning it into something that has the characteristics of the Douglas fir forest that was there before. It is a building that is in complete balance with nature. The six-story Bullet Center is part of a growing effort to meet the living building challenge, the world's most rigorous standard in sustainable building. It requires a structure to generate all its own energy, harvest its own water, and deal with all its own waste on site. The foundation decided that we really wanted to walk our talk. We've been preaching this stuff for the last two decades. Uh, now we're going to show that, that not only that it can be done, but that we will do it. They hoped to design a building that was so elegant and energy efficient that it would inspire builders around the world. But first, it had to be built using only locally sourced, non-toxic materials. It was Joe David's job to screen out more than 350 toxic chemicals. square foot building. It's all commercial office. Yeah, you can pick anything. How about uh, like this concrete column right here? So we know that all the stone that's in this concrete comes from about 30 miles away. It was surprising how often you'd come across a product that um, you know, may have some toxic component, but it was just being used because it was, um, you know, industry standard. We may be the first office building in the world to be essentially toxic free. All of the wood in the building, and there is a lot of wood in this building, is, is certified to meet the highest international standards of forestry. We can go back basically pallet by pallet and figure out what forest the wood was extracted from, where it was processed. On top of the building, they're counting on a sprawling array of solar panels to generate 230,000 kilowatt hours a year, hopefully just enough for the building to break even. If you can build it in Seattle and make it work, then there is certainly no excuse to build it in any place in the southern two-thirds of the United States where they actually have some sunlight. To run a 50,000 square foot building off the sunlight that falls on it, the structure has to be super efficient. Tenants in the building are going to have incredible access to daylight. Given our energy constraints, we went back to uh, using daylight to, to light the spaces. The Bullet Center is at least 80% more efficient than most of the high-rise commercial office buildings in Seattle and is operating at least twice as efficiently as really the best, greenest, current, comparable Class A office buildings in Seattle. And yet we'll still have ample lighting, our computers will work, our refrigerators will keep our food cold. We're just, we're not sacrificing any services. We're just doing it vastly more efficiently. Hayes wants this level of efficiency to become an industry standard. If you took just the office buildings in the United States today and reduced their energy consumption by half, you would be saving twice as much energy every year as America imports from the Middle East. The solar panels will also funnel rainwater into a 56,000 gallon cistern. There, it'll be filtered until it's clean enough to drink. And how will they deal with the human waste in the building? By using the world's first six-story composting toilet system. Unlike other green buildings, Living buildings must prove their environmental creds for a full year. That means each of the building's tenants will follow a strict water and energy budget. Robert Pena and his team from the University of Washington's Integrated Design Lab are some of the first occupants. This is an opportunity to really be in a living laboratory where we can really poke and prod the building's vital signs. We don't think that we'll see any difference in our working lifestyles. One notable difference will be the price. The $18.5 million center runs about $355 a square foot in construction costs. That's $55 more per square foot than a typical commercial building. We'll be paying a little bit more for a living building for the uh, 
uh, the fact that we want it to last 250 years. Uh, but we think that's the way that the economy ought to be organized. You want to build things that will endure, something that will become part of the, the quasi-permanent wealth of society, not something that you put up and then rip down a few years later and haul off to the dump and build another one. Fundamentally, this building is about making healthier communities. I think sometimes we forget that the biggest cost of doing business is, is your people who are working in that building and not the real estate. And if this building can demonstrate that it really is a, a happier, healthier, more productive place to work, then all of these questions about um, energy, water, even real estate costs, I think become a whole lot less important it's impossible to say that something is impossible if, if it exists. And I wanted to get something that was concrete out there, that was functioning, that would serve as an example. Because once you do something, then it becomes thinkable for everybody else to do it. I would love people to remember the, the Bullet Center as a bold pioneering effort that showed that what could be done and was at the vanguard of a revolution in building technologies. And at the same time, I would really like 20 years from now to have buildings that are better than this one and for people to come to it and say, what was all the fuss about? It looks like all the other buildings.